Welcome back, part three, course overview. We're going to review a pretty important set of definitions here, and concepts, revenue recognition and matching. And if all the concepts in accounting, these are the ones that accountants refer to the most, and not just accountants, but CEOs and managers as well, because it affects the sales of a company and it affects profit of a company, how we treat these correctly. What is revenue recognition? Revenue is recorded only when it's earned, and it may or not, and this may not be when cash has actually been received, or it may be when cash is received. In some instances, cash is paid at the point of sale. Revenue is recognized at that point. In some cases, cash is paid in advance. In some cases, cash is paid later if a customer is billed for the service. So we recognize the revenue at the point we earn it from a company's point of view. Correspondingly, expenses are recorded only when they are incurred, not necessarily when the cash is paid, but in the period when the company benefited from it. So let's do an adjusting entry here for our supplies account. Remember, in a previous transaction, we purchased $400 worth of supplies. But now it's a month later and the company counts and there's only $225 worth of supplies. Well, we had that $400 sitting on the balance sheet as an asset, but we can't leave it there as $400 forever. As we use it up, we move it from the asset account to the expense account. Now that's a simple transaction, but it has huge implications for our statements. Our assets go down and our expenses go up. When expenses go up, profit goes down. So how do we reduce an asset account? Assets normal balance is a debit, which means normal balance means what does it take to increase an asset, but we want to decrease an asset, so it's going to be a credit. So credit to office supplies, debit to office supplies expense. Expenses normal balance is a debit. We have increased expenses, we have reduced an asset. And how do we get that 175? We had purchased 400. We subtract our ending inventory so we know we used up 175. It's kind of the same idea as when you go to the ATM, you get out 60 bucks on Friday. Monday morning, you check your wallet and you've got $2. You know you spent $58 or somebody stole the money from your wallet, but same idea. All right, let's look at revenue. What if we performed consulting? It's at the end of the month. We've sent all the bills out and a salesperson comes running in the door and says, hey, we forgot to turn in this one, but actually we, we performed the service, we did some consulting for them, we completed it all three days ago. So yes, you can count that $2,200 worth of consulting. You make an accrual entry, just as if you had billed the customer. So what do we do when we bill a customer? We debit accounts receivable and we credit service revenue. Now, if you didn't bill them, please bill them right away because a, com nobody's, a customer is never going to pay you unless you bill them. And sometimes they don't even pay you unless you call them. But, um, but you are allowed to count it as a sale. And in this case, the sale is for service. So we don't call it sales, we call it service revenue. So accrual accounting allows us to really tell the true story of what a business is doing in terms of its sales and in terms of its expenses. This adheres to GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And GAAP are all the accounting principles that we are required to follow as accountants, as companies. And that's what auditors look for. Is this company um, preparing its books in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles? And there are many, many, many rules in the accounting principles. And as you go on in accounting, you will be referring to these rules um, as you make decisions about how a company should treat different transactions. But let's take an example. Let me, let me try to sell the idea of accrual to you one more time. Let's say you own a painting business. You opened it up December 1st. You got a big, big, big client. Big building in downtown Bellevue. You purchased your supplies, paint, um, disposable paint brushes, whatever. You rented equipment, cranes perhaps, to get up on this tall building bought a whole bunch of paint, hired employees, paid your employees, and you billed your client. Then on December 31st, you decided, I don't want to do this anymore. 
you close your business. But your customer hasn't paid you yet. In January, your customer pays you, but you had no new business because you were done. So let's compare this painting business using accrual accounting and cash accounting. Okay, we have two years of books here shown very simplistically. Accrual accounting, year one and year two. Cash accounting, year one and year two. Let's say that client committed to pay you $80,000 to paint his building or her building. Let's say your expenses, paint, uh, cranes, equipment, rentals, etc., came to 50000 Using accrual accounting, we would have booked an entry, a debit accounts receivable, credit service revenue for 80000 You would have debited all those expense accounts and credited cash for fifty, and you would have had net income of 30000 now that's a great percentage. If you were to take 30 divided by 80,000, you would have um, well over 30% uh, net income percent. Not bad for a first year. But the second year you had zero business because you closed your business. So the second year would, would be nothing using accrual accounting because you've already booked your revenue in year one. Now of course you got payment for work done. But remember, that only affects the balance sheet accounts. You would debit cash for 80000 and credit accounts receivable for 80000 But let's say you said, no, 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 I'm going to do cash accounting. I didn't get paid, so my revenue year one was zero. I did pay all my expenses, so my costs were 50000 In year one, I lost 50000 right? Revenue minus expenses is a loss. But, oh, wow, look over here in year two. I got paid, so I get to call it revenue, 80000 had no expenses, so I had profit of 80000 Now this doesn't really tell the true story of this business. 50000 loss, 80000 profit. No, it's better to match the expenses and the revenue in the same period. So accrual accounting really wins because it tells the true story of what's going on in a business. Cash just makes it look like you had a big loss and then the next year a big profit. Now if you were in my classroom right now, I would make you guys stand up and say this wrap as a way to remember accrual accounting and how it affects revenue. So let's go. If you want to be accrual, here's what you got to do. When the service is performed, you book the revenue. And I'd make you say that a couple times. All right, let's review. Uh, take a few minutes, write out the expanded equation without looking. And it starts out assets equals liabilities, etc. And then under each account, under each category, list example accounts. For example, under assets, cash would be the first one. Under liabilities, perhaps accounts payable would be the first one. Under expenses, um, pick some common expenses. And try to list as many as you can. You really want to drill on this account titles before you go forward. Um, you really want to not have to think two and three times is this an asset account? Is this an expense account? You want to be able to just rattle this off. You know, we say accounting is the language of business, and part of language is memorizing new terminology. All right, this ends part three. Let's go on to part four.